everyone, this is Doris from the Peabody Essex Museum's Art and Nature Center and today I'm going to show you how to finger knit a snake of your very own. So these are two snakes I made with two different types of yarn. This is um, a fluffy green yarn and this is um, a cotton yarn so it's a lot more like string. So if you don't have yarn you can use string. And then for these eyes I used a hole punch and then drew on them with marker. These ones are googly eyes, and for the next one I'm going to use buttons. You could also use any type of bead, or even just um, another piece of yarn that's a different color to tie on to make eyes. Um, and then the only other thing you need is a piece of string for the tongue, and some yarn, some scissors, and your hands. So the first step for finger knitting is to make a slip knot. So I like to make a loop. And when you make a loop, you want to make sure it crisscrosses over. So it's not just a loop this way, but it's a loop with an X. And then you're going to take one half of that X, preferably this working side, but it doesn't actually matter for this step. And you're going to put that, that side through the loop to make another loop here. So you'll notice it looks just like an overhand knot on top of your loop there. And then you can pull it tight and you'll have a loop that you can tighten or loosen from the inside. I'm going to tighten this loop up, but not too tight, and I'm going to put it on my pointer finger. There we go, and I want to make sure that this extra tail with no yarn attached to it is out of my way, so I'm going to put it over my thumb like that. This yarn here is the working end of the yarn, so this is what we're going to use the whole time we're making our snake. So I'm going to make another loop, by making an X in the yarn and tightening it on my, um, that's my index finger. And then I'm going to make another loop with an X and put it over my ring finger. And then one more loop with an X and put it over my pinky. It should look something like this. That's a double X, but that doesn't really matter. But it should look something like this from the back of your hand. And from the front of your hand, it should just look like flat loops. Now we start the knitting process. So we take the working end of our yarn and we go um, over, under, over, under, and then back over, under, over, under. So that you should have a second row of loops above your first row. Then I'm going to take this first row of loops and one by one loop them over the second loop and off of my finger. So this one I'm going to lift over the second loop and off of my finger. Over and off of my finger and then the last one over and off of my finger. Now I can kind of pull on this end here and it will be out of the way from now on. So my working end of yarn is going to go over, under, over, under, again, and back again. So it's always hanging off the side of my pinky. And then I'm always lifting the bottom loop over the top loop and off of my finger. So all those loops that you're making end up piling up and linking to each other behind your fingers here. So let's keep going. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And then up, over, and off. And you can do this for as long as you'd like to create your snake. After each row, I like to um, pull on the back of the tail here just to tighten it up. And if it inches up your fingers, just push it back down like that. So I had a short piece of yarn, so I'm actually coming to the end of it. You might have a larger ball of yarn like this. So when you get to where you're ready to be finished, you'll just cut a tail that's long enough to tie at the end. To finish my snake, I have to take these loops and attach them to each other. So I'm going to start with my first finger and I'm going to take it off and flip it onto my second finger. Then I'm going to take that loop and go over. This loop is going to go on to my third finger. This loop will go over. And each finger till your pinky, you take the loops over. And this final loop, you want to take your working end of yarn and you want to loop it through that loop and tie it in a knot. 
Now I have an end here, and this end is usually a little bit thinner. Usually this one is wider, so this one makes a good tail. But once this is done, I like to cut it and just leave a little bit. Since it's the tail of a snake, it's good that it goes all the way to thin. And on this side, I'm going to weave this end through this loop and tie them together so they become the head of the snake. Tying um, a little double knot. So one knot and then another before I cut it. And then I'll cut it right close to that knot on this side. And now this will be the head of my snake. For this snake, I chose a piece of string that's red and white. For the first one, I colored a white piece of string, red with a marker. For this one, I used some red yarn and I actually braided it together to create that tongue. And to get them to stay separate like this, I put a little bit of glue on them so they would be stiff. I'm going to put a loop through the head of the snake here and feed the two loose ends through that loop. And this is called a half hitch. And it attaches the string to itself and also to the snake. So I've got a half hitch and that way there's actually two tongues here, but I can twist them together to make one. So I've got the two ends of my string and I'm going to twist them together. And I might put some glue on that as well to keep it from coming apart. So the glue you can also use if you're gluing on your eyes. For these two snakes I glued on my eyes and for this one I am going to get some thread and sew them on. I'm also going to put some glue on the tongue here to keep it together. So for the eyes, I'm going to take my needle and thread, and threading a needle is pretty tricky. What I usually do is make sure the thread is really flat and then pinch it between my thumb and first finger, and then I push the needle down and the thread up through, and then I get it threaded just like that. Now normally, if you were sewing through some fabric, you would tie a knot in the end, but I'm sewing onto some yarn, so I'm going to tie a knot around the yarn where I want the button to be. So, here's the end of my thread. It's around two pieces of yarn here. I'm gonna tie it in a knot. I'm gonna make that a double knot, and then I'm going to put the button on. So the buttons have holes. I put my needle through the hole, settle my button down, put my needle through the other hole, and I'm going to put it around those pieces of yarn that I have tied to my thread. I'm going to go back up through one of the holes and back down through the other one. And now that eye is attached. So I'll go up put on my button, pull the yarn tight, and go back down through a couple times. Down through the button, and up through the button, and down through the button again. So, I'm going to trim this first string from where I tied my, um, my eye on. And then I'm going to tie a knot in this second string on the bottom of the snake here by making a loop with the thread and then wrapping the needle through that and pulling tight. And now I can trim this part as well. So sewing on the eyes is definitely the trickiest way to do it. So the first ones I made where I glued them on, that was pretty easy. But I wanted to show you the trickiest way in case you decide to do that one. So here are my now three different snakes. And they're based roughly on snakes that you can find in New England. So this one is a water snake. This one is a worm snake. And this one is a smooth green snake. So you can look those up if you'd like. Enjoy and please share your creations with us online with the hashtag PEMPOD or hashtag Peabody Essex.